completely off the rails. The floorman appears. Nobody's coming at you. Why do you think that? 24 big blinds. I got my ace king finally. For a quick workout before the tournament. And who isn't there but Garrett Adolstein, the G-man, but you know how it is. Bro code. If you have earphones in at the gym, the queen could come back from the dead. I would still go ahead and do my reps, look like an idiot. I've done everything I could to prepare, you know, within reason. It was really at uh, short notice. All the study, all the preparation, all the flight readiness. So now it's time to play. Savor the moment. Enjoy it. Do my goddamn best. MTTs. Anything can happen. Let's go. Very first hand of the WPT, the World Championship, and we are five-handed. The, the first position opens to two and a half X. Uh, we are on the button. A pair of sevens. Uh, you know what, it's the first hand. Uh, we don't want to go crazy. I'm just going to go ahead and call here. The small blind actually decides to come along as well. So we're praying for that seven on the flop. Here we go, baby. The small blind quickly checks to us. First opener, he checked to us as well in the end. I fired something around half pot, but uh-oh. Now the slow blind and check raises my bet over four times. Preflop Razor actually called, calls him. Now I'm thinking, God damn it, was she dropping tens? Does he have the straight? The turn actually brings in a six and the small blind quickly checks. Under the gun, Razor checks behind us. The hand goes completely off the rails. The floorman appears and he immediately stops the action. In this number one hand of the day, in this $40 million guarantee, the player in the small blind that check raised you big, he's not supposed to be here. He's an imposter that was supposed to be at a completely different table. We have to continue with the full knowledge that this player who played this one hand will actually hit and run. So with this knowledge, I checked back the turn and the river, cha-ching! We actually did it. We hit a six, giving us the full house. The imposter, he actually bombed it. He bombed it with the open razor still in the hand, with me in the hand, fully knowing that he will be running with our chips if he actually wins. Can this be Jack Nine? It was really tough to put him on a bluffing range. In ideal circumstances, I think I could have made this uh, incredibly difficult fold <laughs> with the full house on the river, but in your very first hand, when you just sat down, when the floor comes and intervenes and disrupts your fold process, and you know that this guy will freaking hit and run, it was not something I, I could have done. And that's where I got the bad news. The imposter actually woke up with the tents. He only called them pre-flop. He bombed the river to about 16 and a half thousand chips. So I lost about 50 big blinds total. Uh, and he took out chips and left. And the open razor told me later that she actually had kings there in this spot. So we got hit and run in the very first hand of the World Poker Tour. I took it like a champion. Things like these, uh, they can't really affect me. So. I basically uh, was very calm, and even now, you know, poker is variant, and uh, I am very proud of how I actually handled this. First hand, first hand. He wasn't even supposed to be there. Full house, of full house, holy. All jokes aside, this hand didn't slow me down at all. It was five or six handed in the first two hours and I went to battle. This is where I was supposed to shine and shine I did. I had two interesting hands against uh, a guy we call Little Dicky. Oi, oi, let's have that mushroom. Hello, Hello Mr. Mushroom. Basically, the number one hand, I had a stand suited. I opened in the middle position, button calls me, big blind calls me, so I, we are freeway, uh, random check, seven, seven. I have a back door, so I go ahead Checking a small seabed with my back doors. Uh, little Dicky actually calls me, and I decide to actually put in a check call there, pick up some floats. River is an ace. Little Dicky starts tanking for a long time. <laughs> it obviously makes me sweat. If he goes ahead and overbets there, I might have a tough spot. But he didn't go for it, so I took one pot away from uh, Little Dicky. What's up? Had a pair? I had a jack. I oh, had a jack. Okay. And I wasn't sure that would make it fall, man. It has to be a very big Yeah, pot. I kept chipping up, chipping up. I was taking down pots, bluffed with complete air, forehanded on the river on a four straight. So I, I chipped up all the way to about 87,000 chips. I was really near my initial stack. Uh, unfortunately, little Dicky got his revenge right there. I opened the ace uh, six suited. 
I flip the flush draw, same situation, I'm in the middle position, he's on the button bell freeway. I went ahead and Seabed, this time little Dicky didn't call me, he went ahead and raced me. I call obviously with my not flush draw, he bet about half foot on the turn, insta call for me. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get there, I was back to about 70k uh, going into level 3. This level was like night and day, more or less. I suddenly found myself uh, down to about 50 big blinds. That was the, the most guy that I've ever been in my life, I think. I built up a really tight image over the next two hours. I used this image to my advantage. One of the Asian guys, uh, really, really solid rag, who was active, who knew how to play aggressively, uh, opened in the middle position. The cutoff called him, and uh, I went ahead and uh, squeezed with my King Queen suit. Uh, the rag, the solid guy, he went for the small four bet, and he is actually playing facing a squeeze. I, I simply let it go. So. so here we go. This is what I practiced for in the last levels. I went in with about 25 big blinds. My plan was clear. Play tight in the early position, try to steal the blinds where I can, try to play really, really solid and wait for that coveted all-in spot, that double up where I put it in really, really well. Before I could do that, however, there was more drama at the table. The big blind jammed out of turn and the button actually was confused and he went ahead and uh, raced before him, allowing the big blind player to take his chips back and uh, the original razor could then come in and actually stack the original uh, free better. He was not happy about that. Coming at me for no uh, nobody's coming at you. Why do you think that? Just discussing the options of the hand. After that, it was go time. I was down to about 14 big blinds, but I didn't give up. I was taking down chips as well, chipping up all the way to uh, about 24 big blinds, but oh, oh, there we go. I got my ace king finally. Unfortunately, the player hits the calls and he the game? had the aces. Yes. So, yeah, you unfortunately, sure. we didn't get any help. Uh, I was at, at about 21 bigs against the aggressive guy. Yeah, Basically, I uh, was playing very solid. I opened the raised ace under the gun, uh, took down uh, sizable pots, um, but uh, it didn't, wasn't enough to chip up really too much. Uh, I was always hanging around the 20 big blind level, going down to 18. Uh, I think I increased to about 24. Uh, in the end, uh, I finally got the hand I was waiting for. So I'm at about 21 big blinds. Uh, I'm in the small blinds and uh, one of the players that has been really aggressive actually raises. So it's go time, right? <laughs> we have Ace King. Uh, this is exactly what we needed to double up, uh, wait for the dinner break. And unfortunately, he instantly called, you know, he instantly called. He couldn't call fast enough. He was very excited getting the money into the pot. And uh, yeah, he turned over the aces and uh, he held. So yeah, that was all she wrote. I just didn't get the cards. You know? I was hoping to get the cards. I was playing very really aggressive on the first two levels, uh, on the feature levels though. That was nothing I could really work with. So yeah, I'm out guys, unfortunately. And I want to give my thanks to the people who made this possible, who gave me the shot. Sven B from Poker Strategy, Barry Carter, who are, unfortunately couldn't make it, uh, but he thought of me that I could come here. Uh, Eric Lush from uh, World Poker Tour and the organization itself. Um, even at the tables, you can see that people are having fun. They're having a great time, even though the stakes are really high. Uh, I played very seriously when there was a hand on. I covered my face. I didn't say a word, but uh, in between hands, uh, it was a pretty casual atmosphere. People even told you what they had. And uh, I think World Poker Tour is doing an amazing job. So thank you everyone for watching everyone who gave me this opportunity. And who knows, maybe one day I will have another shot at the World Poker Tour World Championship. Peace out. First hand, first.